Hi, it's Brian, <clears throat> and we're into June the 6th. We're returning to uh, the uh, issue of uh, debt, and we're going to look a little bit at global debt uh, this time, because it's getting pretty serious, the whole issue. Okay, so uh, I'm just reading from an uh, extract that um, I located from 2008, <clears throat> the debt crisis, and uh, this is... Uh, written by a uh, Stephen Ledman and it was uh, done in 2008 and he's got some interesting figures here which help speed up our discussion in this short video. Uh, <clears throat> debt crisis. It's far too big to control. Based on Fed flow of fund figures, there are now 52 trillion in interest bearing debts in the US, according to US Government Accountability Office estimates. Add another 60 trillion in contingency debts and obligations for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and other pensions. In addition, the Bank of International Settlements, who we have heard before, heard of before, BIS in brackets, earlier cited a staggering global debt total including derivatives of one quad trillion, one quad trillion, or a thousand trillion. In a separate report, it says at 596 trillion, but even this number is unimaginable and unmanageable. Just amazing, isn't it? Uh, and so far, Reckless government outlays amount only to a fraction of this amount, around 2.7 trillion. Get a sense of the magnitude of a problem. Compare the size of the debt and the derivatives, bets outstanding, to the tiny amount injected to combat it. It's minuscule and may fall way short of being effective. The debt build-up in the U.S. today is far greater than it was on the eve of the Great Depression. Pre-1930, it was between 150 and 160 percent of GDP. Today, excluding derivatives, it's nearly 350 or more than double the earlier. <clears throat> Include them and debt levels. Go off the charts. Now, <clears throat> we talked about the Bank of International Settlements briefly there, and um, some figures were extracted for the purpose of this article. <clears throat> Don't ask me to give you too much detail on the Bank of International Settlements in these little video clips, but <clears throat> you can go and look for yourself. Just simply Google BIS, Bank of International Settlements. And you'll get their website. And then you can look at all the commentary around them. You don't have to send me little notes saying you haven't substantiated this or that because there's heaps of material. Don't be lazy. Do some work on your own on this account. Some people have actually, you know, suggested that I should back up what I say about, for example, the Bank of International Settlements, which I made a small video long time ago about. <clears throat> okay. So, I mean, we've sort of got to a point where the bailout costs are far too great to be financed. I mean, the actual interest on this money that's owed is just horrendous. And this is one of the problems that third world countries are having, is that they can't even repay the interest, let alone the principal. And so we are, uh, look, you know, this, uh, we've, we've actually reached a point where it's, it's absurd. The, the whole financial situation, in fact, um, there's, it's like an unseen force, a huge vampire sucking the blood, the energy of the earth away from it. It's actually demonic when you think about it. It's incredibly evil. And it's all around usury. I mean, there are people who are controlling the financial purse strings. They are loaning money two countries that are in debt knowing that the money that they loan to them won't even meet their interest repayments. They're not helping them at all. And it's all um, being papered over with sort of altruistic slogans and so forth. 
uh, the World Bank, a National Monetary Fund. It just digs detonations deeper. And uh, the tragic part about it is now, it's not just the US, it's the entire world. Look, I've got a, an article here, and it's the latest uh, Guardian Weekly. And I'm just going to show you the headlines. The EU woes slow global recovery. And here it is here. And what it does, basically, is it talks about the fact that the EU is tanking. And it's no way, as I said in my last video, that the US is going to be able to pull it out. We haven't talked about Asia and China, but, you know, Japan. We could go on to um, a list of the detonations. And actually, um, it's uh, a lot of this material is still flowing in, but uh, we could look at the 10 most. And I mean, the Asian uh, community, China's got its own set of problems. And there's no way that uh, even though the Chinese economy is strong and so forth, look, it's built on slavery. And that's not going to last. I mean, you've got this huge number of people who don't even get paid after they've worked for months, a year in China. What kind of economy is that? That's not going to actually drag the world um, out of a mess that it's in. We actually need a paradigm shift. The whole way that we do business and allow the banks to control us is a complete nonsense. And effectively, you know, we've all got undischargeable mortgages on our lives. It doesn't matter. Right down to the local level with stupid local authorities. They're in trouble as well. The one that I work with. Uh, I'm a councillor at a local authority in Wellington City. And we've got um, a ridiculous amount of debt in relationship to uh, the small number of rate payers or tax payers, local tax rates, local tax at a local level. And I mean, I haven't actually started to talk about that because actually the parochial side of um, this for YouTube is just um, a bit uninteresting. It gets boring. You need to look at the big picture to make things worthwhile if you're doing YouTube stuff. And that's what, you know, effectively I've been doing. Talked a little bit at the last uh, vid I did uh, about the uh, campaign, local campaign, local level stuff. You know, politics, we're all fighting. It's a battle uh, for ascendancy. And this balancing of the rights of the individual against the rights of the community, it doesn't go away. It just carries on. And uh, there's virtually no way you can find a middle ground. So you end up having to polarise issues and take extreme positions in order to find that middle ground. That's what it's all about, guys. And, I mean, you know, the whole uh, methodology, the way we do things and so forth, the human condition so fraught with, um, you know, frailty and weasel-like in our activity. My goodness, even the best of us, you know, most uh, suspect behaviour. And um, this is why you're never going to have a proper education, you know, unless you actually have a manual that talks to you about the history. This the history of human behaviour and the greatest manual on the history of human behaviour has got to be the Bible. I mean, even in terms of literature, you're not going to even understand Western literature unless you've read the Bible because there's so much in Western literature that alludes to uh, the cultural foundations of the Western world, the great Western culture that came out of Renaissance and Reformation and gave us modernity and now post-modernity, was based on Judeo-Christian principles. We've forgotten all that. There are a few people around who understand these things and, and realise that, um, you know, uh, being deeply shallow and skating along with the rest of popular culture is not satisfying. It's, in, it's entirely unsatisfying. And so, you know, we make these videos, little provocative videos for thinking people.